Cyberpunk 2077, it's all the hype again right now, isn't it? And there's no arguing that it is a stunningly pretty game. At its best, in 4K, on PC, and with an ultimate ray tracing setting they call the psycho level of ray tracing, and with promises of looking even more impressive by the end of this year with Nvidia's new RTX 4000 series GPUs sporting new technology and new efficiencies for ray tracing that will allow for something they're calling ray tracing overdrive mode. I guess, uh, I guess they peaked too hard with psycho mode. <laughs> overdrive doesn't sound as cool as psycho mode, does it? Oh well. However, let's face it, most gamers out there aren't running sort of bleeding edge hardware, so they can't run games like this monster to its ultimate prettiness. The average sort of enthusiast level gamer, someone passionate about their PC gaming, should still be able to reach, you know, 1080p or 1440p with mixed and high settings and perhaps also a little bit of ray tracing, depending on their GPU. Uh, and the game looks pretty great, even at sort of middle and mixed settings. It even looks okay on the consoles, really if you must slum it over there. <laughs> but how low can we go? How basic bitch potato powered PC can this game actually reach playable levels on? It's not really a question I cared about in earnest. My rig's a bit of a monster and I can max out ray tracing and run at 4K and reach 460 FPS without setting fire to nearby objects with uh, relative ease. But I've been doing a second playthrough recently now that patch 1.6 has fixed the notoriously problem plagued game sufficiently enough for it to be worthy of my time again and I've got a video digging down on those thoughts a little more for you if you like I'll link it in the down below but in my second playthrough I've been using a few small quality of life mods just stuff to make things go nicer nothing gameplay changing or anything like that no no cheaty stuff just you know pleasantries. However, in this evolving task, upon my daily poke around in the increasingly active modding scene of this game, especially now that CD Projekt Red have released official modding support, I stumbled across a mod called Performance Boost for Potato PC, promising to reveal a whole pile of hidden settings and options in and around the graphics settings to help the game run on what PC gamers lovingly refer to as potato power PCs. So, in my curiosity, I busted out my teeny tiny ultra small tinier than a console mini ITX PC build that I did a few years back, 2019 I believe. It's powered by a Ryzen 5 3400G which has a built in AMD Vega 11 GPU and to this day punches surprisingly way above its weight class when it comes to running games, even a lot of recent AAA stuff. That Ryzen 5 3400G is truly, truly a little monster, I love it. but. Cyberpunk is where it starts hitting the walls, and, and pretty hard too. As you can see, it's not what you'd call playable. I see the frame right there with the two in front of it. That's not a good thing. Hasn't been for quite a few decades. Frankly, I was a little bit surprised it booted up at all, because the game calls for 8 gigabytes of system RAM, which is all this system has. But, as I said, it has an integrated GPU, and 2 gigabytes of that system RAM is assigned to the Vega 11 for its graphics needs, so 6 gigabytes in effect for the system. And of course that Vega 11 in very broad terms falls somewhere roughly between a GTX 1030 and a GTX 1050 in its ability to pump out 1080p gaming, quite a long way short of the GTX 970 that's listed as a minimum requirement with half of the VRAM as well. But boot it did and even ran without crashing, much to my even further surprise. But even at its lowest possible graphics settings and with AMD Fidelity FX scaling at its highest scaling factor, uh, playable it was not. Not even dumping all the way down to 720p, the lowest resolution the game has support for natively. Uh, did anything to help with the frame rate frequently in the 20s and with huge amounts of lag and stutter. Utterly unplayable. So then, in other words, this is a perfect test bed for this mod, to see if it can actually do what the game's native settings could not do, and make Cyberpunk 2077 playable on a 3500G. The mod installation is very, very easy, as many mods for Cyberpunk actually are, just drag and drop a folder into the game directory. You will need to have CET, aka Cyberpunk Engine Tweaks, installed already. It is a very common framework used by a whole ton of other mods of this game, so if you've done any modding, chances are you know what it's about already. Bringing up the main UI for CET in-game sprouts a long list of checkboxes for all manner of graphics stuff that isn't in the native graphics menu, most of which takes effect immediately as soon as you click it, which is nice and easy so you can see the you know, effect as you click it away. And there's a few you'll need to use the time skip function in the game to kind of force the change to happen. 
But pretty immediately, upon turning off a few options, my frame rate shot up to something very close to playable. I messed around for a while, mixing and matching various settings and pairing them with various uh, settings for Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and I did get somewhere damn close to decent. Not great, but reasonably stable at least, and close to never diving below 30 FPS. And my, my target, by the way, was around 45 or so, which is not the perfect ideal of 60 FPS for PC gaming, but it is nonetheless a very playable place for this game. But no matter how much I turned off, that lag and that stutter remained, unfortunately. I was pretty sure I knew why, of course. The rig only has 8 gigabytes of memory, and again, that's the absolute minimum the game needs, and I'm sharing that with the GPU here. So, 6 gigs effectively, and with the GPU having half as much as the game really wants it to have. So, out with the twin 4 gigabyte sticks then, and in with a pair of 8 gigabyte sticks, kicking up the total system RAM to 16 gigabytes, a much more sensible amount for today's gaming, and frankly, even when I first built the system, 8GB was a bit silly, but the first form of this build was fully intended for only retro game emulation, so it wasn't an issue for those, like at all. But now, with the less humble 16GB on board, all that stuttering and hitching was gone, just as I expected. But if I'm going very, very fast down a very straight road and loading into a new area, I'll still see a small stutter sometimes. But, you know, while distracting, that condition is never going to affect gameplay, because even the driving missions in the game don't happen at those speeds and in those locations and don't tend to cross into new areas very readily. So it's kind of an outlier little hitch, and it's uh, a lot less severe than it was anyway. So now it was just a matter of more sort of A-B testing of various checkboxes on and off and mixing and matching and fine tuning to see where I could land without making the game super hideous, but also staying above 30 FPS and targeting 45 or so. Eventually, settling in at 1080p with Fidelity Super Resolution at Performance Mode, which basically means that that 1080p is being upscaled from 720p internally, a fairly tidy upscale pixel for pixel, but not as clean as NVIDIA's DLSS, which sadly Cyberpunk only supports Fidelity FX 1.0, by the way, which is a bit crap to be frank, and uh, and not nearly as good as the current Fidelity FX stuff is around. I wish they would update the game to support Fidelity FX 2.0 and on, but whatever. It is better than nothing, and certainly nicer than 720p native, at least. I was able to leave a few things on, most importantly, local shadows, contact shadows, global illumination, and dynamic decals, and anti-aliasing, all of which make a very noticeable improvement to presentation, anti-aliasing and global illumination in particular being most vital to making the game look decent. As without global illumination, the game looks basically broken, and without anti-aliasing, well, the jaggies are beyond what I'm capable of ignoring or tolerating, I'm afraid. So the noticeably soft image from the basic anti-aliasing is, in fact, preferable, but not ideal. It's the best we can do here anyway. And now with only an extremely rare drop below 30, usually when there's a lot of physics stuff happening, 95% of the time I'm sitting between 30 and 40 FPS with little to no stutter or lag, driving feels great, combat feels great, exploration feels nice. I consider it quite playable at this point. But I mean, I can play with the game looking like this, so I won't be playing it like this on the little machine, but the point is, if all you've got is a potato PC, or maybe you're hoping to run it on a, you know, less than ideal laptop or something, this might be your path to making it work where it wouldn't work before. And at the very least, I found all this very interesting to dick about with. It was a nice afternoon of fiddling around, and, you know, we all like to fiddle with ourselves sometimes. Wait, no, hang on. Um, anyway, it's, it's always fun to see modders push games both past what developers could do by making them look and, you know, act even better than what they used to. And of course, it's just as interesting to see modders push below what the developers delivered to allow this kind of mod to exist so people can run stuff on hardware that wouldn't ordinarily be able to run it. Reminds me a bit of those super low resolution texture packs and janky shaders people used to use for getting Minecraft running on the shit hardware a lot of kids had back in the original Minecraft hype days. Remember that? So, I give you Cyber Potato 2022. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? That's what I'm going to call the video. Cyber Potato 2022. I think that's catchy. Hope you found this as interesting as I did. Feel free to give it a go yourself. The mod is, of course, free. It's non-destructive. Doesn't really hurt your game at all. And the only really annoying thing about it is it doesn't seem to remember your custom settings between sessions. So you have to quickly set it back up again after every boot. In any case, thank you very much for watching all the way through. Hopefully you did the sub and the bell and the thumbs and all that sort of stuff on your way past. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. And as always, thank you very much. The patrons scrolling above there who's above me on support is glorious and shining and um, quite a bit higher resolution than the uh, cyberpunk gameplay here is. <laughs>